In the beginning, let's get the elephant in the room out of it and let's start, talk about the factor of Russia. And I'm, I've been reporting on in Brussels for the last eight years. I know what the official NATO line is that no other country can interfere with the uh, with another country's choice to become the member of Alliance. But lately we've seen some uh, comments from the uh, Kremlin and Moscow that even cooperation might, might spell unpleasant uh, surprises for Georgia. And what I would like to, you would like to ask you is, what would you call this kind of approach from Russia? Well, what kind of tactic is that? I think what we see is that Russia is trying to re-establish a system of spheres of influence where uh, big powers as Russia has some kind of uh, right or, 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 or mandate to interfere in what uh, neighbors uh, uh, can do or uh, cannot do. And, and this has uh, never been a, a good thing. This has always been the wrong approach because Every nation, uh, small or big, has the same right to decide its own future uh, and therefore it's enshrined in a lot of uh, uh, documents which also Russia has subscribed to. Uh, for instance, the Helsinki Final Act, which actually was kind of the, the main document during the Cold War defining the rights of, of, of nations to uh, choose uh, uh, their own path, uh, including to decide whether they would like to be part of a security alliance or uh, not. Russia dislikes that. Uh, well, that's their position. We uh, adhere to the principle of every sovereign uh, nation's right to decide its own path, including Georgia. Uh, absolutely, but now what we are saying is they're talking about cooperation, and cooperation is why you're here, right? You're, it's part of cooperation. And when somebody tells you, don't do this, or there'll be uh, unpleasant surprises, is that intimidation? Uh, it, 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 it reflects uh, an attitude from Russia which I deeply disagree with, uh, namely that they have the right to decide what Georgia or another neighbor can uh, do. Uh, Georgia is a sovereign, uh, Georgia is an independent nation, and of course Georgia then decides uh, what kind of cooperation Georgia wants with uh, other uh, countries, other neighbors, or uh, with uh, uh, NATO as a security alliance. Uh, uh, so, uh, Norway joined uh, uh, the Soviet NATO in 1949. At that time, uh, so the Soviet Union uh, uh, didn't like that uh, Norway joined the NATO, but we joined NATO. Uh, Russia has protested heavily every, every time NATO has been enlarged with the Baltic countries, with Poland, uh, with, uh, with Romania, with, with Bulgaria, with the Baltics and uh, or the Balkan uh, when the countries in, in the Balkans and now we saw it recently when Montenegro joined, Russia protested but, but Montenegro joined. When North Macedonia now is joining, uh, Russia protested but North Macedonia is, is, is joining and of course it's for you to decide, Georgia to decide, what kind of uh, level of cooperation, activities, whatever you want to do with NATO, that's for you to decide and then for NATO allies, uh, of course, to decide. Uh, Russia doesn't have any say on that. And I think it's well appreciated by the <coughs> Georgian public. We have an over overwhelming majority supporting uh, NATO and the European Union integration. There are also skeptics, but I think the whole society would want to know uh, if if something happens and if this surprises or whatever they call it materialize, what kind of assurances they could count on from NATO? Well, NATO supports uh, Georgia uh, with uh, political support. Uh, we support your sovereignty, territorial integrity. Uh, we provide uh, significant uh, practical support uh, with uh, presence. Uh, in different ways in Georgia with exercises, uh, you are part of a high readiness force, we have the training center, we have the NATO Georgia Commission, uh, we have the annual national program, uh, we have uh, NATO trainers and advisors uh, here in Georgia, many of them uh, directly are working for NATO, other works for uh, uh, NATO allies, but still it's part of the broader NATO support to uh, uh, Georgia. So. 
it's obvious that NATO is already in Georgia. There is more NATO in Georgia than ever before. And actually, there is more Georgia in NATO than ever before because you are part of our missions and operations in many places. Excellent. And I've read an article in Washington Post recently where it uh, says a huge uh, military facility will be built in Poland. And uh, the motivation for that was brought to kind of deter uh, Russia to having some funny ideas about venturing in, into Europe. What I would like to ask is, as a, speaking as a Secretary General, what are the red lines for Russia when it comes to NATO? We, we don't accept that they define red lines for what certain nations can do. Of course, we will always be a defensive alliance. Of course, we will always respect the integrity and the territorial integrity of our neighbors uh, because we are a, a defensive alliance. Uh, and we will never force any country to join NATO. So we have excellent uh, neighbors, uh, partners like, uh, li like uh, Sweden and Finland and Austria and, uh, and, uh, and you know, I mentioned Serbia. It's a partner of NATO. Uh, they have clearly stated that they, that they don't want to become a member of NATO. Fine, that's their decision. So when Sweden and Serbia have decided, two different countries, but both neighboring NATO, have decided they would like to, be, uh, to, to, to stay neutral, to stay outside NATO, that's a decision we absolutely respect because NATO has never been in the business of forcing countries to do something they don't want. Uh, but then we welcome the fact that uh, these countries, Finland, Sweden, Austria, Serbia, other uh, neutral countries in Europe, are close partners and, and we work closely with them uh, and that's fine. But, but this is about what we decide uh, through uh, democratic processes, voluntary decisions. Funny enough, you mentioned uh, Pol uh, Finland and Sweden and there have been a recent article as well uh, from uh, our ex-president uh, Saakashvili who opined that the next countries to face threat from uh, Russia will be exactly those two countries. Would you share uh, your thoughts on this? Your I think first of all we uh, should not speculate too much because I think too many speculations just adds to the uncertainty and may actually uh, risk uh, increase tensions. Our aim is to reduce tensions, is to calm down and actually work for a better relationship with Russia. Russia is our neighbour, Russia is there to stay and I know from my previous position as Prime Minister in Norway that it is possible to work with Russia. Uh, we did so for decades, even during the coldest period of the Cold War. Uh, Norway worked with Russia on uh, border issues in the north, on energy, on fishery, on uh, actually some military cooperation. Um, uh, but that was not despite NATO, it was because of NATO, because NATO provided us the strength, uh, the unity, uh, that enabled us as a small uh, uh, neighbor of Russia to also sit down and work with uh, Russia. So, so we, should not, we should not increase tensions, we should uh, try to reduce tensions and, uh, and uh, continue to work for a better relationship with uh, Russia and that's the reason why NATO strongly believe in what we call the dual track approach, deterrence, defense and, uh, and dialogue. And second, we don't see any imminent threat against any NATO ally. Uh, we see risks for terrorist attacks, for cyber attacks, but we don't see any imminent threat. Uh, Including Georgia. Uh, uh, well, it's not for us to make an assessment on behalf of Georgia, uh, but uh, when we speak about NATO allies, we don't see any imminent threat uh, of any armed attack. I need to uh, follow up on the notion of working with Russia, if, you, uh, if I might. Um, based on this government and based on what, it, what this government is doing, I'm talking about the uh, uh, current Russian government, uh, do you see them as feasible partners in foreseeable future? Then so Russia has to then change behavior. Uh, I'm always very reluctant to predict uh, when things may, may happen. Uh, I think that NATO has to be prepared uh, for both the situation where Russia continues to confront us. And that's the reason why we have implemented the biggest reinforcement of collective defense since the end of the Cold War with high readiness of our troops, uh, with, uh, with uh, uh, combat troops in the eastern part of the Alliance uh, for the first time in our history. We are modernizing the, uh, the command structure. We, are, we have, for the first time in many years, started to increase defense spending. So we have done a lot and we are doing a lot to strengthen our collective defense as response to Russia's aggressive actions, for instance, against Ukraine. 
But at the same time, we, we are open for dialogue, uh, uh, for, for, for working uh, with Russia, uh, and, uh, and, and it's up to Russia to decide. Uh, I, and I'm also, uh, and, and I'm very careful about predicting too much mm -hmm. uh, about when Russia may change behavior. That will may, may be in a distant future, or it may happen uh, soon. That's impossible to say uh, anything uh, uh, with certainty about today. We have to remember that no one was able to predict the fall of the Berlin Wall. We didn't predict 9-11, uh, the attack, we didn't predict the, the illegal annexation of Crimea. So we just had to be prepared for the unforeseen. We need a strategy to deal with uncertainty, with surprises, and that strategy is a strong NATO because NATO reduces risks and NATO enables us to deal with surprises when they happen. Georgia is working with NATO on this. Georgia is a close partner uh, and, and Georgia is moving towards uh, membership. That, that was exactly the point of my next question. Is uh, I spoke to a predecessor uh, uh, in December and he said that uh, the so-called occupied territories, the breakaway regions uh, recognized by Russia, they are presenting uh, obstacle towards Georgia's membership to NATO. Would you uh, comment on this, share that opinion? How much of a <coughs> factor is that? First, and not the most important message, is that NATO uh, recognized Georgia within its uh, internationally recognized borders. Second, we call on Russia to withdraw its forces from uh, Abkhazia and South Ossetia and, uh, and to uh, uh, stop uh, uh, recognizing uh, them. Uh, um, thirdly, uh, NATO allies made uh, uh, the decision that, NATO, uh, that you, Georgia will become a member. We have re reiterated that many times, so I'm absolutely certain that we will find ways to deal with that. The important thing now for Georgia is to focus on reform, uh, improve your democratic institutions, uh, modernize your defense and security institutions, and then we will, uh, from our side, continue to work on uh, the message, the, uh, the, the, the commitment of NATO to support you on your way towards membership. Secretary General, you're averse to predictions, but I can predict that some of the, our readership, when reading about reforms, when reading about, the part, about this part of the interview, will inquire, I mean, if reforms are the deciding factor, how came uh, countries like Montenegro and Macedonia and so on are joining and we are not? When we, if we look at democratic standards and rankings, we are not far behind, if not ab above them. So they will definitely will be asking that in a certain skeptical note. So if we could answer those, call them allegations. So that first of all, these countries implemented significant reforms. Uh, second, at the end of the day, uh, it is a political question and every Aspen country is unique and has to be assessed on its own merits. Um, uh, the only thing Georgia can do is to continue to implement reforms and, and to modernize your defense and security sector, to, to work with NATO allies as you do here at the NATO Training Center, uh, to exercise together with us, to, to meet our standards in, in many different ways, in many different areas. Um, that's the, the only way towards membership uh, then to become a member we need consensus, we need the political conditions in place uh, and I cannot say exactly when that will happen but I can say that all NATO allies have agreed that you will become a member and uh, as soon as the political conditions are in place then you should be ready to join and therefore the best thing you can do is to continue to focus on reform. The good thing with reform is that you, you, don't, you should not reform only to please NATO. You should reform because that's good for your society. It, it makes you more resilient, it makes your democratic institutions stronger, it makes your armed forces better, uh, and, but on top of that it, it helps you to move towards both NATO and the European Union. Excellent. And the last question. Uh, we were speaking about consensus. Those, uh, in that consensus has not been reached yet. Those who are skeptical towards it, what are their reasons? What are their rational thinking? Well, I will not go into the specific arguments of different NATO, NATO allies when we discuss these issues. Uh, all uh, allies agree that uh, you must continue to uh, implement reforms, um, defense security institutions, your democratic institutions, and we will provide you with help. Uh, we are extremely grateful for the partnership with Georgia, not least because you contribute so much to our security. 
uh, as we very often say in NATO, when our neighbors are more stable, we are more secure. And, and, and you are now really addressing uh, some of the challenges in this region, uh, in your own country, in a very impressive way. And that's good for Georgia, it's also good for, uh, for NATO, and you contribute for instance, to our response force, uh, you are you have been president of Afghanistan for many many years. Today, I met some wounded soldiers from the uh, uh, NATO mission in Afghanistan, some uh, Georgian soldiers who have participated there, and of course, we are grateful uh, and and we pay the respect to all those uh, from Georgia who served, uh, who has served in uh, NATO missions and operations. Secretary General, thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you.